being independent and an independent voice. So how can you talk us through that messaging? So um, uh, that, one of the things we said was um, that, you know, the Conservatives are whipped, basically. So if you have a Tory councillor, he will be forced to vote according to party lines on key things. So, for example, there was a big local controversy over the approach taken to resurfacing a major local road. And so the implication of what we were saying was if you have a Tory councillor, they just have to go along with, you know, overall Tory plans. Whereas if you get a Green councillor, we're not whipped. We look at things independently. We're free to work across party lines, you know, to seek common ground. We're free to scrutinise what the council is doing. You know, we're an independent voice that's able to hold the council to account. And so people, you know, even sort of people who were, who liked having a conservative council, which clearly the majority of them do think, you know, they, they vote Tory mostly at elections. They liked that idea of somebody independent who was keeping an eye, keeping them honest. And that's one of the key messages that's been used by other West Midlands candidates to win in Tory seats. Can I follow that up with a, with a question? Um, I'm Dick Wolf. I'm one of the other councillors here in East Oxford. Um, that's something I, I agree with very much and would like to be, uh, is already part of the campaign messaging that we've got. But it's not a simple message to put over, is it? Um, that's not something you can put in a small box. The way you've described it now, which is very good and accurate, is actually quite long-winded. So how do you actually put over that message? I mean, we've tried to say... Um, something about holding, it's a Labour authority here, holding Labour to account. That's played fairly well, but what kind of phraseology did you use and how did you put that very succinctly? So the blue letter says, um, uh, I can speak up for residents and hold those in authority to account. Um, unlike the Conservative candidate, I won't be whipped to follow a party line. We need more independent voices on the council to ensure transparency. Um, yeah, you know, accountability, you know, holding to account, independent voices, transparency, those sorts of concepts are what we talked about. So we, we've used a very similar, we've used it to, um, we used it in both the county campaign and in the, um, and in this winning campaign. And we had a bit of a discussion about it actually, because, um, it's um, whilst, of course, it's true that we don't whip, um, we do also like to collaborate as a group. So you don't want to present too strongly that you don't that you don't then want to work together as part of a broader group. So we had quite a discussion about how to and I can't find the leaflet in which we landed on, but it was more about accountability than it was about um, it. Uh, we did use a language of independence, but it's more about a stronger on accountability. I'm just trying to look for the leaflet in which we, but we did have quite a argument about it and discussion so, about it. I, I um, think there's a request here for you to send copies of, of that, even if it's a slide yeah. that got, or just a, you know, a image of it rather than the actual. Yeah. So that would be really great. Thank you. I, um, I get the impression that that blue letter, um, what we saw of it, wasn't covered with party logos or anything like that. It just looked like a personal letter from an individual, yeah? Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's the whole point. So it's in a hand-addressed envelope so that people will open it. And it's written in handwriting, which I was quite resistant to, but, you know, the regional advisors insisted. Um, and there's no party logo. There is an imprint, of course, on the back at the bottom. You can see it there. Um, so it's clearly a party political piece of literature. But nobody, you know, people are, people are happy to vote for a green in the sense that they like being green. Those sort of general green ideas of we live in a lovely green uh, county, lovely countryside, you know, we all like wildlife and animals, that sort of common ground sort of thing. But people feel a bit resistant quite often to, you know, green with a capital G and their prejudices about what that's about. So we didn't um, shrink from using green um, imagery 
more generally. So on the uh, so on the calling card, it's prominent. On the poster campaign, it's really prominent. On this, you couldn't possibly miss the fact that I'm a Green Party candidate. Um, but the blue, the blue letter cut through to people who might not have looked at any of the other stuff and just chucked it out. And it just added that sort of personal touch. Although, of course, it's printed. It's not actually handwritten 2,500 times. But it gave that people that sense of being a personal touch, and they really liked that. Any other questions? Well, I'd like to ask a question, which is um, canvassing. So I mean, I've, I've been campaigning for you know, 20, more than 20 years and been elected for more than 20 years. But I, the thing I always struggle with, and I'm always interested to see what others do, is how you canvass outside of election times. But people are canvass, but how do you sort of understand how people are going to vote? And, and how do, or do you? try and understand how people are going to vote outside of election time. Shall I, shall I give that a go, Ellie, and then you can follow up? So um, we, so um, as a party locally, um, we endeavour to get a team out every month doing something um, that helps build voter ID and helps build profile and understand build profile of our candidates or existing councillors and helps understand what's um, what matters to people and we do it in a number of different ways. So today um, the team are out. Uh, we've got a petition going about um, uh, water fountain um, instead uh, to. Uh, to put water fountains up in Lewis Town in order to um, prevent uh, uh, use of plastic bottles and um, we're targeting a place where we've got low voter ID uh, that's reasonably close to town centre so the danger of doing a petition that's kind of a traditional green type issue on the doorstep is that it creates greater distance between you and the voter um, particularly but doing it in a sort of town centre area, it has relevance. And and uh, I spoke to the campaign manager today, um, who told me that, and and they're gathering voter ID in the conversation as they're doing it in a very gentle way as they get into conversation with people about the petition um, and why we're doing it and what party we're from. Um, that's one way. The other way we do it is about is um, 60 second surveys. So you guys must be doing 60 second surveys um, uh, and have done them in the past. Um, a couple, uh, in November, uh, we did one in again an area where we don't have much voter ID. Um, and we're doing a very, very, we're doing a very simple version. I've got a more complex version that's the kind of standard now um, national party template. But actually, the really simple one that's really easy for people to fill out that doesn't really have any stuff on it is really useful. Um, and sometimes we get into conversation with people when they're doing it, uh, uh, just before as they as we give it to them to. to we get into conversation about that gathers voter ID and it's really gentle, you know, like, um, how, how do you normally vote in, and would you mind telling me how you normally vote in a, in a local election or how do you normally vote in an election? Would you mind telling me? Um, and so, and then, um, uh, so that's 60 second surveys, petitions, um, and then more generally, um, uh, Johnny, our, our candidate in News Valley, will just go out with a group of people uh, door knocking about local issues. So we'll just go and introduce himself, uh, maybe deliver a newsletter and introduce himself at the same time um, and, and, um, and pick up bits of casework along the way and collect voter ID with the data. So it's not like random door knocking. It is targeted to particular places where either we need to find something out we haven't been before or um we haven't been for a long time does that does that help it's quite hard because i can't see you it's now oh, right, it's no. like basically talking to yourself it's quite yeah, no. challenging oh, we're all still here we're all still here thank you yeah thank you very much that's very helpful ellie did you want to add anything? Um, we had no voter ID at all. We had no canvassing data before we started this campaign. Um, 
we I can't remember how many we did I think we did about a, we tried about a third of doors but then only got data for about a third of those I think and um, we're gonna have to do it all again in about 14 months time because we have all in elections so back in May 2019 doing the same again and um, I haven't it hasn't crossed my mind to do canvassing before we enter the next election campaign to be honest and um, I was just thinking of doing the, you know, the sort of general communication and sort of door knocking within that. But uh, yeah, maybe you're right. We need to be more systematic about that in the intervening year. Um, we, I mean, the thing about canvassing data is, of course, the point is to get out the vote. And we did run a get out the vote operation, but we only had about 100 confirmed green votes at the time of election day. Um, and so obviously, you know, we got those out, but we won because we had much, much broader support than that. So hopefully next time we can be more, more on the ball with that. But we can, I, can I just pick up that point um, about polling day? Um, because I've run two now successful um, polling day operations and um, both resulting in a whim. So um, um, one of the things that's has been really striking for me about polling day and about really knowing where your vote is and therefore really focusing on doing all year round work is that um, for our September election, we had 825 votes. Um, we knew were G1 and G2, so definite green and possible greens. And um, 835 voted for us um so and we got 90 percent of that vote out on the day and then in a recent by-election that that we just won that i led the campaign on um we had a thousand g1s and g2s of which uh we knocked up 550 of which 540 ended up voting for us mm. so um the thing the thing for me is that is that we have to have the data that helps us to know whether or not we're going to win on the day um, and then absolutely get the vote out. And it's amazing to me, Ellie, that you can have won without knowing any of that. So, <laughs> so um, you know, it, it just goes to show that in 2019, with, with building a bit more of a team and get knowing a bit more, you'll, you'll get you'll get an even better result. And maybe there'll be more than one of you in a single, is it a single seat or is it a multiple They're all seat? single member seats. So 2019, we're going to have four defence seats uh, and we're going to try and target another two in North Herefordshire and a couple more in South Herefordshire. Yeah. Not, well, I just wanted to say for, for, for Ellie, and we had Glenn here from Hereford because he's, his partner lives in one of our target wards in Oxford. Ah. So he came out doing 60 second surveys with me. So he's going to talk to you all about 60 second surveys. Fantastic. To, to do stuff outside election time. We, we got onto, into them a few years ago and they've been brilliant. We've, we've been out today, in fact, doing 60 second surveys earlier. Right. Great. Which is great. So do we have any more questions? Uh, yeah. I'm slightly worried about the presumed lack of reference to the equality of all values. I mean, it seems sort of slightly um, dishonest, if I may use that word, um, you know, not to be not to be saying anything about the ideals for which your candidate would be working if you got elected. So yeah, I did. Yeah. So I, I it's not. Um, so the uh, the our messaging is not um it is about it is about values so our messaging and i, I think you could see it in ellie's um messaging too uh, it's just not it's not about policies because i've yet to meet anybody on the doorstep that wants to talk about policy um, what people want to talk about is the things that matter to them in their local communities. And then we have to talk about that in a way that aligns with our values and our policies, but we don't talk about the policies themselves. Um, so, uh, for example, 
uh, one of the, um, you know, one of the issues for us in this local campaign has been about um, housing developments. So there's been a fair few, in Ringmill, there's a fair few housing developments that a lot of people aren't terribly keen on. And uh, we had to walk a very fine line because people need somewhere to live, but they, um, and particularly, you know, we need affordable and sustainable, you know, lower cost housing for people. Um, so we had to walk a very fine line of being clear that we were opposing a development on, on, and on what grounds were we opposing that development. So the development is opposed because it doesn't fit with, you know, it being affordable or sustainable or, you know, a whole host of other issues. Um, we've got another very big development going on that we're opposing um, and, that, and we're opposing on, on, on the grounds of um, green policies, but we don't talk about it like that. We talk about it on the grounds of what matters to other people and then we bring in those other issues in the conversation. It's just not all over the um the headlines and it doesn't feel dishonest to me it feels responsive um and it's not it doesn't feel i i've I've, ne I've never felt like i'm acting out of integrity of what i truly believe in i feel like i'm listening to what matters to local people and then i'm translating that and interpreting that into a way that i can get them represented by somebody who will do good on their behalf and further the things that we all care about as a political party. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think the question was about, you know, isn't it a bit bad not talking about what we believe in? Um, something I didn't really hear, but um, I suppose a couple of things. One I would say is that I think our publications try to show, not tell. So, you know, we, I mean, I've spent 20 years working in international development and sustainable development advocacy. And so I say that on my things, but I don't say, you know, I don't bang on about climate change in my leaflets, for example. So people know very clearly and quickly, I think, what it is that I stand for. And people also know what they think Greens stand for anyway. And I had UKIP people saying, oh, I've got lots of sympathy for, you know, lots of what you do stand for in terms of the sort of, you know, waste and transport and that sort of thing. Um, so that I don't think there's any hiding what, you know, are essentially sort of quite radical ideas. Um, at the same time, in order to win, we need to communicate in terms that the electorate generally want to hear. So it isn't about me trying to sort of convince people who are even more like me than I am that we all care about the same things. Actually, the reality is that now I'm elected, the vast majority of contacts I get from the general public is about things like potholes and planning, literally. So, if, which far outweighs the people who want me to do stuff on environmental things like campaigning against the bypass proposal and that sort of thing. And that's the reality. If you wanna be a councillor, you have to want to work on that stuff, applying your principles to those issues. So, um, and now that I am councillor, what I'm trying to do, I mean, I'm only seven weeks in or something, but to me, there's two really important parts of the job. One is the representing local people on planning and potholes stuff, which isn't you know, the main reason I got into it at all. And the other one is carving out the time for the things that I really want to work on sort of proactively and constructively. And I've communicated to my residents to say, I'm gonna work on sustainable transport, I'm gonna work on adult social care, and I'm gonna work on investment policy for the council because we've just got 42 million from selling off our farms. There's a real risk that the Tories are gonna invest that in carpeting the place with tarmac and Mac homes without you know, any sort of environmental or other, even financial oversight. So that whole scrutiny thing's coming in very, clearly there so I feel that um it you know it, it wouldn't help to sort of bang on about traditional green views in in my election stuff what I want to tell people is that I will work incredibly hard for you and I'll be a real good local advocate that's why you want me by the way I've got really strong principles too and you can't disagree with them mm. Thanks very much, and it, it ties in very much what Caroline was saying, certainly in a meeting yesterday she gave in Oxford, which was about the need for more emotional messaging based around values rather than something which is, you know, very technical.
policy focus because you know all the evidence shows people respond far more to emotional messages um, uh, so you know, as, as witnessed by UKIP who basically run a campaign yes without any rational messaging at all no uh, no um, yeah I also think um, just one more point I suppose at local level people really vote for people yeah not for parties and not for policies yeah really vote for individual people and and the reason we know this is because there's so many independent candidates um independent councillors and so you've got to you've got to work with that and you've got to be the sort of person that people want to elect and want to represent them and you you know that's what people want to know what sort of person is this rather than what sort of list of things are they concerned about they're not separate, obviously, but it's that personal thing that really wins the election, I think. Okay, I think we're probably drawing to a close now, but uh, I just, well, let's, let's show our thanks to uh, you spending your time. Thank you very much. <laughs>